Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying functions lecture four. This is QOD 18, take the screenshot. And now let's start with the identical functions. So we have three main key pointers for describing the two identical functions. The first and second one is domain and range basically. So if both the functions have exactly same domain and same range in that case, we can say that uh, these two functions are identical functions, not completely, but uh, these, are, these are the two starting points. Now the third point is very important. So that means basically both functions should have equal values for same values in the common domain. What that means is uh, they both should have same graph, exactly same graph. So for uh, let's say we have X naught X equals to X naught. In that case, both functions should give equal values for all X naught values, right? For all X naught values in the domain, the function should give same values. Basically the graphs should be same, same. Now let's take an example first. Let's say we have fx equals to x squared by x and gx equals to x. And in the first glance, this, this might look that, okay, these are two equal functions because we can cancel out x squared and x over here. So that would eventually become x. But that's not the case, right? Because x cannot be, x cannot be zero over here, right? So when x cannot be zero, domain doesn't uh, remain the same. So over here, domain is, sorry, domain is r minus zero and over here domain belongs to r. So domain is not equal and hence the functions are not identical. Let's take one more example. Let's say we have fx equals to tan x and gx equals to cot x. Now we know that let's say x equals to zero. We are taking this point. This function is defined. fx is defined, right? But cortex is not defined at x equals to zero. So here x cannot be zero. So again, these two functions are, sorry, not cortex, one by cortex, one by cortex. But the concept remains the same. X at x equals to zero, this function is not defined. Basically cortex not defined. So hence gx is also not defined. It's, it's not in the row, uh, it, it's not in the domain. So basically not defined. And hence these two functions are not identical. Now let's take one more example. Let's say we have fx equals to one by sine x and gx equals to cosec x, right? Now we know that at x equals to zero, this function won't be defined because denominator would become zero, right? So this domain becomes r minus zero, right? Over here as well, cosec x not, is not defined at x equals to zero. So x is not equal to zero for this one as well. So domain becomes r minus zero. Now we can clearly see that these two functions are equal for domain is same range is same. Basically these two functions are identical. We can write this as cosec x, but we can write only when, when we have defined that domain is same range is same, right? Uh, so we can clearly see that these two functions are identical. Now this might sound very counterintuitive that tan x is not equal to one by cortex, but one by sine x equals to cosec x. So that is how it is. Now let's talk about functional equations. So what are basically functional equations? So let's first try to understand what are the equations. Let's say we have one equation fx equals to x squared plus two x plus three. Let's say we have this equation. So what is this equation? We have defined the function in terms of the variable x and some constants, right? Now, what if I define fx equals to f of x plus one plus f of x plus two and maybe some other uh, functions as well. So what, what we are doing over here, we are defining a function in terms of functions itself. So uh, that's why it's called as functional equations because we are defining the function in terms of functions itself, not in terms of variables called x or y, right? Now to solve these equations, we have two methods. The first one is iteration method and second one is replacement method. Let's try to understand these methods. So let's take an example first. We have uh, we have been given over here that f0 equals to one, f1 equals to two, and fx equals to one by two times f of x plus one plus f of x plus two. Find the value of f of five. Now the main idea is over here to just plug in values and try to find the other values. So very crude way of solving any equation, right? So that is the iteration method. So you can clearly understand with the name that you have to iterate again and again to find the values. Or, or sometimes what you can do, you can make in different series. So let's say we have been given over here 
you have to find some f of nth value and uh, maybe f of x plus n where we, we keep on iterating till n value in that case it might be possible that we get a different series over here and uh, the terms get cancelled out and we don't have to do the regular manual iteration right but in this case over here we cannot see that we cannot we don't really think that we can make a, a different series over here and that's why we have to do the manual iteration so that is a very crude method to solve this these type of equations so let's try to solve it so we have been given over here fx 2fx basically equals to f of x plus 1 plus f of x plus 2 so what i'll do i'll just rewrite it as f of x plus 2 equals to 2fx minus f of x plus 1 right now we'll try to put in the values so we have been given f of 0 equals to 1 f of 1 equals to 2 so what i can do i can find out the value uh, of f of 2 from here by putting x equals to 0 so let's say x equals to 0 over here then what we'll get f of 2 equals to 2 times f of 0 minus f of 0 plus 1 that is 1 right so 2 times f0 that is 2 and f1 equals to again 2 2 minus 2 that would be 0 now we have got f of 2 as 0 i'll again put 1 over here so what we'll get f of 3 equals to 2 times f of 1 2 times f of 1 minus f of 2 that would give me 2 times f of 1 is 4 4 minus f of 2 0 that is again uh, that is 4 now f of 4 would be 2 times f of 2 minus f of 3 right so because uh, what i have done i have uh, kept uh, 2 over here x equals to 2 now what we'll get over here uh, 2 times f of 2 would be 0 because f of 2 is 0 right minus f of 3 minus 4 that would give me minus 4 and similarly you can calculate f of 5 so you can clearly see that we are iterating over again and again what if what if we would have got uh, equation like f of 0 minus f of 1 so uh, if it was like this f of x plus 2 minus f of x minus f of x plus 1 then it would have made much more sense to create a different series then we would have written as f of x plus 3 equals to f of x plus 1 minus f of x plus 2 now you can clearly see that this these gets cancelled out so if you have to find the summation of all these terms or maybe you have to find uh, one singular term uh, by forming forming a series over here then these would this would have made more sense so that is another approach for different types of questions but over here we have we just have to like rewrite things and again and again, again and again and find out the value now let's look at the second example in the second method as well that is replacement example so over here fx sorry fx plus 2 times f of 1 minus x equals to x square plus 2 for all x belongs to r so when i'm saying for all x belongs to r i can replace x with some something else right so that's why i can clearly see that if i if i try to write f of 1 minus x over here plus 2 times 1 minus 1 minus x then what i'll get over here that is nothing but x only that would give me 1 minus x square plus 2 what why i am able to do that because x belongs to r x can take any value so that's why i can do these kind of adjustments now how i got the idea to do this because uh, i saw that if i plug in 1 minus x over here the terms get replaced and i get two equations and when i have two equations and two variables i can solve them uh, for the value of f now this is simply two equations and two variables in fx and f of 1 minus x you can clearly solve this for the fx value and you can get the fx value right now let's try to solve some pnc problems in the, in calling out the number of functions so basically these this is a very important topic in terms of pgdba and a few questions have been asked for this one so let's try to understand this case by case so there are three cases basically number of a number of elements in set a equals to number of b number of elements in set a is greater than number of elements in set of b and number of elements in a is less than number of elements in b so let's take the case one so what we'll be doing we'll be finding out five things for every case so basically total number of functions total number of onto into functions and total number of uh, one one and many one functions so let's try to find it out so the first case over here is 
n a equals to n b. So we have five elements over here. This is set a, and this is set b, and n a equals to n b equals to five. Now let's try to understand total number of functions. Now just to give a recap, what are functions actually in terms of arrow diagrams? So basically, what is the definition of functions? Now it says that every element of A should be mapped, and also there should be exactly one image, not two images. So basically, it shouldn't be like this because it's diverging, and it has two images in set B. That shouldn't be the case. This can happen. Multiple uh, elements from set A can map to uh, single single elements or single element of B. That can happen. That is the case of many one uh, many one functions. But the opposite cannot happen. That is the base case. And similarly, all the elements of set A should be mapped. Now, when I am trying to write total number of functions, when I am trying trying to calculate total number of functions for this kind of case, n equals to n b, I can clearly see that this set, this element has five choices. And similarly, this also has five choices. So basically, this element can map to one, two, three, four, or five, whichever it wants, right? So it has no restrictions. Similarly, b can also do the same. so every element has five choices for mapping so basically two sorry 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 so that would give me 5 raised to 5 so these are the total number of elements over here total number of functions over here sorry now let's try to calculate the number of one one functions these are the total number of functions now we are we are calculating total number of one one functions now let's say this is mapped to 2 now 2 is being occupied it cannot map to any other element because that would make it many one element many one function so basically uh, a has this a element has this five possibilities it can map to 1 2 3 or 4 or 5 right so it has five possibilities but now once this element is being occupied one any one element of is is being occupied uh now b has only four choices it can either map to 1 3 4 or 5 right so it has four choices similarly when let's say b is mapped to one over here now these two are occupied we have got only three elements left so i can easily say that c will have three options e will have uh two options and f will have uh one option so that would give me five factorial so we have got five factorial one one uh functions now for many one that is very simple that would be total minus 1 1 right that would be very simple that would be nothing but 5 is for 5 minus 5 factorial so this is our many one functions now let's uh, talk about onto functions total number of onto functions now the basic definition of onto function says every element of set b should be mapped so basically range equals to codomain in addition to the basic definition of functions right so in this case when we have number of elements in a equals number of elements in b so the only possibility left is singular mapping right one one mapping so basically every element of a is being mapped to just one element of b that is the only possible case i cannot do this when i am doing this two is left behind which is not possible for on to case because range is not equals to codomain over here codomain is 1 2 3 4 5 but in this case range would be 1 1 3 4 and 5 that is not possible so that is why this is the only case or maybe this is the on this is the only case single log single log kind of mapping one one mapping so basically number of onto functions in this case is nothing but one one functions so that would again come out to be five factorial and same with into functions what would into functions be 5 raised for 5 minus 5 factorial total minus number of onto functions so our case one is over now let's talk about case 2 and that is the trickiest case a and b now let's talk about total number of functions in case of total functions we'll use the same concept that a has four choices over here b has again four choices c has four choices d has four choices and e has four choices so 4.4.4.4.4.4 that would be 4a to 5 so we have total number of functions as 4a to 5 right now let's talk about total number of one one functions now tell me one thing uh i have done this kind of mapping now i can clearly see that 
E is going to be left behind. In any case, whatever whatever the kind of mapping I do, one element in set A is going to be left behind, right? Because we have just four elements in set B. So that is why we can clearly say that number of one one functions is zero, and that's why many one functions would be four is per five minus zero total minus number of one one functions. Now let's talk about onto functions. Now that is a tricky part. I'll take that in a new page. Total number of onto functions. Now one might get confused or one might get tricked. That okay, what we can do? We can select four elements from here, and we'll map it one to one from here. And uh, what we'll do? We'll just take one element left behind and map it to any other. So that would give me an idea that. I would do 5c4. Basically, I'm selecting any four element, any four elements from set A. Let's say this, 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 and this. So I've selected 5c4 in this manner, and uh, I'll do four factorial to arrange to map map them in this manner, right? In four factorial manner, and this one left behind. Maybe I'll mark it with some other pen, and this one left behind can be clubbed with any one. So again, it has four choices. So into four. that might give me the answer but that is an incorrect way to solve it why let me show you how now let's say this is one case in this one particular case what is happening we have selected four elements a c d and e now i have i am left with b let's say i mark it i map it with uh, one one element of set b so this is the case now let's take one more case this is A, B, C, D, and E. This is one, two, three, and four. Now, what I have done, I have selected B, C, D, and four. In when I when I am doing five, C, four, I am selecting B, C, D, and E. And now I am marking it like this: uh, C two, two, D two, three, and E two, four. Now I am selecting A for this one. Now you can clearly see that these two are exactly same. the process was different initially when i when i did the 5c4 value 5c4 term uh, when i did consider the 5c4 term i chose a c d and e and mapped it differently over here when i did the 5c4 term i did 5 uh, i did b c d and e and mapped it differently but we got the same output right so basically when we are doing this we are actually repeating the cases and the total number of cases are getting repeated and hence the value is getting increased so that is not the correct approach and you might get confused in the examination uh, for solving this one so this is a little tricky one if you don't know the solution for this one so let's try to solve this from the basics so what what can be the idea so basically we have to fill out all these uh, numbers over here all the elements of set b we have to do that so we should have four elements over here because uh, four groups maybe yeah you, ha you should have four groups over here so what we can do we can combine two and we can keep these as individuals right we cannot combine uh, these two as well because that would give me only three elements so we'll keep three as separate and combine two so we can again, now we can do the mapping easily so for combining what i'll do i'll have to take 5c2 i'll take any two combination that would give me 5c2 now once i have selected two so basically the rest of the three are automatically selected i have selected 5c2 for the clubbing part and now i have to arrange these four with these four right so that would be four factorial very simple right so this is our answer this is how we have to do it now talking about into functions that would be total minus 5c2 into 4 factorial very simple so our case 2 is also over now now let's talk about case 3 let's talk about total now again for total we have a very crude way to solve it so a has five choices b has also five choices so 5 dot 5 dot 5 dot 5 that would give me 5 is to 4 right that is 625 now let's talk about one one function over here now what can be done over here we have four elements over here we have five elements over here so a has five choices so it can map to 1 2 3 or 4 or 5 let's say it's mapped to 1 now to one is being occupied we have four elements left and b is now left with four choices that would give me four and similarly for c it would be 3 and for d it would be 
so that would again give me five factorial in this case it's it's coming out to be five factorial right maybe for some other case maybe let's say we have six elements over here in that case it would turn out to be six into five into four into three that would that won't be six factorial but in this case it comes out to be five factorial once again because we multiplied one or not that doesn't matter but you got the idea how to calculate these now similarly many one would be total minus one one that would give me the answer now let's talk about on to in case of on to we know that no matter what we do no matter what we do we cannot fill out these elements we cannot map these elements completely let's say this is the maximum case we are mapping one element with one, one element of a with one, one element of b but still this four is going to be left behind i might use the different pen so still this four is going to be left behind because uh, we have just four elements over here we have lesser number of elements in a we cannot do this because that would refute the definition of functions basic functions right because we cannot have divergent things we cannot have two images from set a uh, in set b so basically total number of onto functions is nothing but zero so that's why total number of into functions is total minus zero that would nothing but be 625 so today's lecture was still here only and i'll keep on adding few lectures of functions uh, topics like periodic functions composite functions inverse functions which are not really that important in terms of pgdba but they can have slight application other concepts as well so i'll also be covering those and uh, after that we'll be covering the specific functions so basically modulus functions polynomials quadratic trigonometric inverse trigonometric describing every function in very detail so that will go along with the chapters like limits continuity differentiability that will go along with that only so let's meet tomorrow for the next set of concepts of functions thanks for watching